Okay, welcome to today's episode on using Solver in Excel. I've already downloaded the data files that we're going to be working with. It's in a zip folder right here. So I'm going to right click and extract all, which brings up this dialog right here. And I'm going to click extract. And it should automatically open up this folder right here. So you're going to click on this housing.xlsx. So it's this housing workbook. And as you can see, it's got everything all filled in. It's what we've done up to this point. Uh, we're going to be using the solver add-in. So if you don't already have this on your computer, um, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the file tab under the options and add-ins and you're going to go and find the solver add-in and you're going to click go and you're going to check the solver add-in box right here so it looks like this and you're going to click OK. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to be working in the data tab today and what the solver does is it uses some linear programming tools uh, which are outside the scope of this class to really get into detail and how they work and everything but the gist of it is um, it will take in a whole bunch of different uh, variables or um, situations and it'll use certain constraints that you'll set and it'll try and optimize things. Um, optimization is a big field in economics and in industrial engineering and anything further and you should really just take a class on it uh, because it gets really complex from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this solver button right here and the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to um, find the change rate that results in 128,162,068 homes in 2020 in cell G15. So what we're going to do is um, you're going to set the objective. The objective is what um, you want the result to be, what cell you want the result to be in. Um, so that is cell G15, which is currently at uh, a little over 129 million right there. And this is the number, this is the total number of 2020 homes. And we're going to change that to this value of 128,162,068 homes. And the way we're going to get there is by changing cell B4, which is the change rate. And then we're going to use the nonlinear, uh, the uh, simplex method. And this is where we would put constraints, and we'll get to that in just a minute. So we're going to click Solve now. And then this dialog will pop up. And you can generate reports and things like that. You can restore the original values if it wasn't what you were looking for. Um, but we're going to keep the solver solution. This is the solver solution right here, right now. So we're going to say OK. So for 3B through C, we're going to again go in the solver button right here under the Analyze section of the Data tab. And we're going to minimize the value of homes in cell I-15. So it's this uh, big dollar value right here. And that's going to be I-15. You can also use this button right here and just select it. Make sure that you don't have it twice. So I'm just going to select it once like that. All right, so cell I-15, and we're going to select Minimize. And this grays this out 
So we're going to get the minimum value and we're going to get there by changing. I'm just going to select cells G6 through G14. So it's that cell range right here. And then we're going to add the constraint right here. That cell G15 must be equal to 128,162,068. And we're going to say OK. And we're going to use the simplex method again to solve it. And we're going to click solve. And now it sets all these equal to zero. Um, we're still correct at this point. So we're going to say OK. So um, what this is saying is that uh, the minimum value is attained when we set this value right here to 128 million. But we need to set one more constraint because this is unrealistic. You're not going to go from 13 million homes to 128 million homes in uh, even 10 years. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one more constraint using the solver. So we're going to add another constraint that the additional home construction takes place in the region with the lowest home values. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that these values right here from G6 all the way down through G14 are greater than or equal to the homes that already exist in 2010. And we're going to say OK. And now given all of these constraints, we're going to minimize it again. So we're going to solve it this time. And this is the value that we're currently looking for. So we're going to say OK. So um, this is uh, the lowest home values using all the existing homes that we currently have. And that's it for today. The last thing that you need to do is starting in row two of the analysis questions uh, to just uh, answer the question, the number of occupied homes in West Virginia has increased by 40% since 1970, but the state's population has only increased by 6% in that time. What might this signify about the state's population demographics? So just provide a reasonable answer to that in row two right here in the response.